Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Today's project is I'm going to fit a snorkel to the uh, Hilux Revo. So it's a uh, 2.8 turbo diesel. So I've chosen the Safari brand snorkel. Now there are two different models for the Hilux. SR5, so that means they've got fat thighs. Is the standard which I have bought. So it comes with this piping here. Now that's a pretty solid piece of piping for a 2.8 litre diesel and an Air Max model. So the Air Max has even larger flows but requires a bit more modification to the air box. This one will require some modification. Now the reason I chose Safari is it's in one piece basically. Now I looked at the Toyota Snorkel and it is in multiple pieces and it has a, a foam seal and, and two other types of seals. So it's just more places for something to go wrong. So I think this is to be a good fitment. And that's what's coming up. So if you want to watch me fit the snorkel and cut big holes in my car, hang in there guys. Okay guys, sorry about the steady unsteady hand on camera stuff. So step one, remove the air cleaner assembly and we'll be taking out the inner guard liner and the mud flap to get access. So I've got uh, three 10 millimeter bolts to deal with plus in my case I'll have to relocate the uh, primary uh, fuel filter now yeah. if the camera can see down there you can see there's a fair bit of movement in this box and it's just got a foam seal between there and the inner part of the air cleaner assembly which is inside this guard here so to remove the air cleaner I'll have to uh, unbolt this that's your uh, mass airflow sensor there. Now these clips here aren't round, they're rectangular, so you need to come in from the angle. So basically you need to bring in your tool in this direction. So there are two clips on the lid and one, two, three, three on the base to remove then I can lift this section off and unbolt the base. Okay guys, that was a bit fiddly. So, it was difficult to work out which way these clips were in, so that one at the base is actually on a 30 degree angle down there. So, mass airflow sensor lead up and out of the way, being disconnected, so now we'll just have to unbolt this air cleaner assembly. It's all going. Well, that was a bit of luck. I only had to uh, remove the three bolts. I didn't have to uh, back off my uh, 30 micron pre-filter. So the unit's free now, which is all good. Pipe works nice and clean. It's a good idea to keep a check on these Toyotas, especially if you're operating in dusty conditions. And inside the airbox is perfect. Which just goes to show you that having that intake sealed inside here, or semi-sealed, isn't that bad of an option guys, it really is not. The air box is out, so this device in here is a pre-spinner, it doesn't actually spin, it actually spins the air. So you can see this foam sort of seal which is what these factory, well it's factory filter and snorkel rely on. So I don't think it's the greatest. So we'll be cutting this off and saving the spinner and returning it. So at the base of the air box is a duckbill valve which allows uh, dirt and water and whatever might come down out and the drain valve so focus there yep so there's a drain there now Safari recommends blocking both of these I'm not 100% certain about that idea I'll give that some thought I can always do it after because it's a good idea that to be able to drain it's what it's designed to do yeah Okay guys, the air box is out. There is the inner plastic insert that that foam seal was sitting around. So, the next move we're going to, uh, well we've taken off the mud flap. So the mud flap's held on by three 10 millimeter headed uh, screws. So then we'll get onto these clips. Okay guys, so this style of clip, you just need to go gentle. And what you want to try and do is unlock the inner piece, it's a 
male female sort of joint. So just go gentle. You know, the moment it's unlocked, you better pop it out like that. Okay, here's a pro tip for you. So the inner guard is attached to the front bumper bar here by three screws and also a, a clip down here. Okay guys, I've got the inner fender down. Now these clips here, they have a locking tab. You have to try and work out where to push them. I suppose there's body shop guys that know exactly how to do it. I like to, uh, well I rough house the first one, but you can actually see the locking tab, how it should work. Anyway, love and learn. Right. So up inside the guard there, you can see the, the ducting which goes to the factory airbox. There's a 10mm bolt there, plus there's a, um, a bracket at the back there to be removed. So, next job. Okay guys, the uh, pickup tube's out. Now there are a couple of clips on it. So I don't know if that was like that in there, but the, the factory snorkel connect, kit connects to this, and it's certainly in two pieces, so I don't know if I'd be trusting that. Okay, so I've removed the air intake sound dampener. It's the same style of uh, rectangular clip. Uh, this one folded before I got hold of it. Anyway, she's out. Okay guys, I've got the template on. I found it a little bit difficult to place the template because the guard is such a bulge on it. But I've aligned it with the uh, edge of the panel and this top here. So there should be enough wiggle room by the time these uh, holes get drilled. I actually imagine it to be sitting further forward. But anyway, let's crack on. Okay guys, so I've got to uh, drill out these holes to 16mm. So I'm using this step drill, now I've taped off, this will go up to 18mm, so I've taped off the 18 so I don't go too far. Now these are quite good for drilling a thin sheet metal, unlike your regular drill bit, that'll want to grab it and rip it through. These are quite steady. Pilot holes. So there's the first step in. There we are. Okay guys, so now we're getting serious. We've got a 111mm rear hole saw. And if those guys aren't familiar, you don't just screw and actually have a couple of locator pins. Otherwise you'd never get this apart. Now, due to the angle of this guard, I think it might kick around a bit. backwards because it's biting too hard. Now it's just the diameter of the thing. So I might back it off occasionally, go backwards. pressure on that panel. It's 
slow and steady. Okay, there's the hole saw when done. Now it says in the instructions an air operated body saw, which I don't have, so I'm going to work it with either hacksaw blade or I'll try my tin snips first. Hopefully that'll uh, cut it. Okay guys, the blind guy would be glad to see that hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to deburr these holes. Then I'll uh, have a bit of a test fit. Now that looks okay. I'll tape this up and paint it from the back side. And then I'll paint it from the front side. Because the last thing we want is anything like that. Now for those that aren't familiar, this is a deburring tool. We will take those nasty daggy bits off so that whoever plays with us in the future won't get cut fingers and it also stops rust starting as well so not really a technical tool I could have done it with my uh, little sanding wheel on my Dremel that would have done it as well what I've done there, I've put tape on the outside of the panel I've sprayed the inside of the panel where I've been drilling I've hand painted the uh, snorkel cutout and probably before I reassemble it finally I'll uh, put layer of uh, lanolin grease in there just to be on the safe side for rusting. Okay our next maneuver is to uh, put this bracket on this snorkel. It's a fair bit of lateral movement so I'll send you it halfway. Now there's some cutouts well divots below it to allow for the heads of the, of the screws that will be going into the ape pillar of the car. So I'll have to transfer the markings from this to the car and take it off again and re-drill. Now I'll fit the studs and the studs I'll be Loctiting in as well. They'll be finger tight but they will be Loctited. Okay so I don't need to go crazy on the Loctite. There'll be heaps of that. So I just run these in finger type. Okay, so we're on for the test fit. Now I needed an extra set of hands which I don't have. So what I've done, I've used an elastic strap from the top to hold this nicely against the body in the alignment I want. And then I need to uh, get up here and transfer the markings from that bracket onto the tape so I can drill it. Okay, so I've marked my bracket. I've drilled my pilot holes. I'll step them out to 8mm that I'll have to deburr and paint. Okay, the bracket's on, so hopefully everything lines up. We'll put the body of the snorkel on, then it's on to modifying the airbox and plumbing it all up. I'm a pro tip for you guys. I found it really difficult to get to this uh, top stud on the snorkel, but by removing the trim panel, it just pops straight up. It makes it a simple job, unless you happen to have a uh, the young kid with small hands to get up there. Okay, and the instructions are really clear here. It says describe around here, but I mean I can see there's locking tabs, and the, the pre-spinner is certainly not a part of the unit. But I'm getting the drift of it, so they want a, a cut mark around here so that we can uh, cut out the spinner from the ring. So I popped out the spring pre-spinner by those two tabs so we're going to have to cut around here and get this to pop back in there okay so I've cut the outer ring and done an elegant job but anyway I'll go around and I'll smooth all this off that's re clipped in there and I need to take that bump off because the hose will slide straight over that neaten with a file or a grinder 
Right, so I removed those lumps and given a rough round off with a file. Okay, so for the moment I'm not going to block up the holes. Now the diagram is not clear which way the pipe goes round. Um, I would believe this would be the restriction to get through the body. It's this kit you don't need to cut the inner, inner wall. We'll find out in a minute anyway. Okay, so this has to come through from the back. So there is a, a collar on here for this panel mount here. So it's not grabbing that. Now we need to connect the snorkel end and put the Jubilee clip on here before we put the air box back in. Okay guys, to get it, get it connected, I've jacked up the car give me a little bit more room. There's the uh, inside, there's the, uh, the top joint, make sure you put the clamp on so you can tighten it up. What I actually did was I started the inside first, that allowed me to roll that rubber back. A bit tricky actually. Okay guys, everything's going along splendid. The collar's in, you can see the, this is the panel joint there. The AirTech one would, would have required me to mill out the inner panel and I don't intend to modify the engine anyway. So I might leave the wiring off until I get this in place due to the length of that. Might make it a bit of, more of a struggle. Officials. Okay, so the th three 10 mils are back in. The, uh, the pipe's nice and clear of the, the bodywork down there. Just need to tighten that clamp up. Back one's in. So I'll give this a wipe out. A little bit of dust on the dirty side, clean on the clean side. Then uh, we'll get the wiring back in and the lid back on. Okay guys, MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor. Put the wiring back in, bolts are on, that's on. Let's look on the part. Put the, put the snorkel head on. I've still got to put the inner guard back in place. And uh, I'll look a few fun games. And I'm losing the light and my work light's going flat. So we'll see how we get on with that. But it's all boxed up and she's a runner. So guys, all we've got left now is to reinstall the, uh, the guard liner. So these pins are simple, so they're only a matter of popping these back and reinserting them. Now this is the one I had problems with. So there's three of these on the mud flap side and one inside it requires you to get a screwdriver in and push here so I suppose there's heaps of body guys know exactly what this is but it was new to me and the other one on the splash panel is this large one and that just requires the same as the smaller ones to pull the centre part back and contract it and there's one tiny one on the lower edge of the front guard that's a, uh, a half turn it's a very long thin plastic pin Everything's going champion. Anyway guys, it's, it's all done now. I was pleased to see that you can't actually see the snorkel in the driver's seat. So it doesn't interfere at all. So it's turned out a good job. I'm quite pleased. I'm still undecided about blocking up the, uh, the drain holes in the airbox. I don't intend to use this as a boat. It'll probably drive through more rain showers than it does river crossings. So I learnt more about Toyota Clips than I ever knew before. So uh, all knowledge is good, hopefully it will save you guys some problems if you come to fit one of these yourselves. If you enjoy the content I create, please subscribe. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, bye for now.